Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. I hope it's a good one for you. I bought this piece of EVA foam. Uh, my son liked it, so I bought it. I had no clue what I was going to do with it, but I thought we might make something with it, cut it up, do something. I wasn't sure, so we were having a bit of a a brainwave session, trying to figure out what we could make with it. But I also had this, uh, and this is actually not a CD, <laughs> it's a cake tray. It's one of those silver foil coated cake things, boards. And I figured we could turn it into a clock. Stick on, cut out and stick on our EVA foam and some numbers around the edge. On a previous project, I made a, uh, uh, I refitted a clock with um, a silent timer, a silent mechanism for the clock, because it was making too much ticking noises. And in the background of my videos, especially when they're fast forwarded, it sounded terrible. So there's the stickers I found for the numbers. They might be a little small. But we'll see if we can make it work. Okay. So what do we need to do first? First, we need to decide on a design and then cut it out. And that's what I tried to do here rather failurely. Uh, yeah, let's turn it sideways. That makes much more sense. Ah, can we fit it on? There's my little cat printout. I just wanted a cat silhouette shape from the internet somewhere and I figured it was actually better to glue it down so it wouldn't move and this glue will just wipe off after we're done so it's just to like hold it in situ while we cut around it you know it's not to stay there permanently and just get the rough shape guideline if you can freehand draw a cat or if you've got any other methods of doing that, then that's what I wanted. <laughs> Click the fingers and it's all cut out. Nice. Peel that off. And we are left with a rather sticky, tacky looking cat. Now we want some more shapes. I want like a circle, maybe a sun or a moon. I'm not sure which you'd call it, but whatever it is, it's going to be above the cat. And I've seen some pictures, quite a lot of pictures, where the cat is like pouring at a butterfly. So we might get a butterfly silhouette as well. Unfortunately, that circle cutter also puts a little hole in the middle. Uh, there's our um, butterfly shape. Let's stick that down. We only want this for the shape. We don't, we're not drawing anything we're just cutting around it roughly to give us our shape. I also realized I'd cut off the uh, antenna in the um, photocopy that I stuck to the, the foam. So I added some antenna in before I cut it apart, cut it out. So there we go. We now have a butterfly, a circle and a cat. And this is the box that the, that's the old one. That's the new one. Now there were two different lengths of the spine that comes out the middle and I had already used the longer one. But there were also a number of different hands that you could choose, like these sort of gothic style ones. They're really nice. And there's some straight ones with no design to them, just straight. And I, I think there's also a red Seconds hand, uh, not second hand, but the seconds hand, the count, the, the thin hand that counts every second. You know what I mean. <laughs> so we need to make a hole in the middle of this thing. So my initial thought was to measure across it in a few different places and draw a cross in the middle. And also my camera keeps refocusing. I didn't notice this at the time that the camera was doing this messing around and refocusing constantly. 
So unfortunately, we've just got the footage we've got to work with, and it's already built and made, so I'm just going to live with it. But I soon realised that this um, circle cake thing isn't actually very accurately 30 centimetres across. So there was kind of a triangle forming in the middle. So as long as we drill right in the middle there, which I did off camera, tried to get it as central as I could. And I didn't want to bust it through and destroy the foil on the top, even though it is going to be kind of covered at some point with some bits. And uh, it comes through. It doesn't come through very far, but it does come through. I just wanted to make sure that it didn't push the foil up. So I clamped it down with the nut and then realised that I shouldn't have actually done that yet. But never mind, we'll, we'll undo that nut in a minute. Here's where I decide where to position the cat, which means I need to make a hole in it for the uh, mechanism to come through. I decided to try and use this drill bit to make the hole. It was kind of half successful and half not. Um, but we can use that round cutting tool I used earlier, just on a much smaller setting. I just like push it up as far as it will go. If you've got like a punch, a hole punch for a circle, that might work on EVA foam, then you could do it with that. So we'll just twizzle that around right in that spot a few times. See if we can uh, remove that little circle. Ah, perfect. Lovely job. It's a little bit rough around the edges because it's very small. It's difficult to do. But that uh, nut should cover it. This is where I realise I've got to undo the nut again. Oh well. Now let's take that off. Beautiful. Because I'd already used the longer protruding one uh, where the centre, where the hands go. I had to just make do with what I had here. Um, so I kind of did the nut up quite tight so it crushed down the EVA foam. And I um, pressed record on the camera, but it didn't actually do anything, I didn't realise. But I glued that down. So now comes the time to put the hands on. The big hand goes on first and pushes down. The hour hand. Try and bend it to keep it as straight as possible. So it doesn't catch on anything. Then the minutes hand pops on top of that. Slightly longer and thinner. And as you can see, I decided to use the straight ones. The other ones were a little bit too gothic-y for this cat design. Um, and I've either got a black or a red seconds hand, but the black one is quite bent, so I thought I'd use the red one for the seconds. And that just pops on top, and there's a nice little gold covering to finish it all off. Beautiful. That was very cheap. I think that whole kit with two of those silent mechanisms was only about £8 on Amazon. Just Google uh, search or Amazon search silent clock mechanism, and you should find lots of kits come up. So you've got to make sure they're all um, vents flat. Let's pop a battery in and just check that it works. Get the polarity right way around. It's quite difficult to pop the battery in one-handed while hovering this over the desk because I don't want to damage anything by putting it down and bend any hands. As you can see, it works. It doesn't tick like a normal clock, like an analog clock would. It just kind of just flows. It's quite eerie when you first look at it. But um, I just want to make sure that they weren't getting caught on each other. It's not usually the long part. It's the back end of the hand that gets caught. It bends down a bit and it gets caught on one of the others. As it, and you've got to make sure it goes all the way around. All the hands go all the way around. When spreading the glue, don't spread it to the edges. Because as soon as you press it down, it will squeeze out. And if it squeezes out... Uh, I suppose you can wait for it to dry and peel it off, the excess. 
But if you try to smudge it or clean it, it will look horrible. There's a bit come out by the cat's ear there, but I'm deliberately leaving it until it's dry. And then I will attempt to uh, just cut it off with a knife, with a craft knife and just kind of peel it back. So it doesn't look horrible. But uh, I don't think this needs too much glue on it to stick very well. It's just PVA glue. I know PVA glue and metal wouldn't normally be a thing you'd recommend, but uh, I think it will work perfectly fine for this. And I'm not on camera, so that's, let's pull that so you can actually see it. I don't care about bits of it overhanging the edge. They can either be trimmed or just left, left alone. I don't mind if they're left alone. Now, if I was going to redo this, I would have done the uh, butterfly horizontal stripes as well, so like the cat and the moon or sun or whatever that's supposed to be. But let's see, these colourful numbers should really go well with it. They're a bit teeny tiny, but I couldn't find any larger ones. If you have a craft machine, you could make your own. Uh, sticker paper and uh, make your own and then size them appropriate to whatever size you're making. As I said, this is a cake tray. I thought it would make a good clock base. I'm actually leaving the bottom of the cap there, I think. I'm not going to cut it off. I was going to cut it round with the clock, but I think I'll just leave it overhanging it. I like it. It kind of looks nice. So we put the 12 on and the six. We need a nine. I'm just trying to just vary the colors. So I'm not just using all the same. I was going to use all the same colors for each, but I realized I wouldn't be able to because I'd need more than one of the same colour, or the one for 12 and one. And it would look funny with one digit, that, a different colour to all the others. I'm just eyeballing this. Obviously, you could measure it and make it absolutely exact or lay an actual clock over it so that you can put it in exactly the right places. But I'm just using my eyes and going, well, yeah, that'll do. You can go there. It may not be 100% accurate, but what it lacks in accuracy, it makes up for in cuteness. Yeah, I kind of squeezed the one in there. When I was sticking the butterfly down, I was kind of aware that I was trying to roughly avoid certain areas where the numbers might need to go. I stuck that down and it wasn't quite how I wanted it, but it's going to wreck the foil if I tried to pick it off. So if you're using a different kind of, like that five went a tiny bit crooked. And I thought, I don't want to peel it off because it will pick up the uh, foil underneath and it might ruin it. So we're up to nine now. Twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now we need to do ten. So yeah, that's another one used there. And eleven would be another one number one used. So there's no way I could make them all the same colour. But let's see what we've got here. Got some nice colours. They all look a bit red to me, but they're not. <laughs> they are different. And there was two sheets of each of all the colours, which meant made it quite nice. If you pick it off quick enough before it really sticks down, you can actually move it. But yeah. Shouldn't have done that. Don't do it. You'll wreck it. There we go. We have a cat clock. And you could hang it with a string. But these clock mechanisms also have like a hook on the back. So you can just put a screw or a bolt in the wall. And as long as it's protruding enough. Yeah, there's a bit of glue squeeze out. We'll just let it dry. And we'll peel it off with a craft knife later. Very carefully. But it's a cat clock. Do not try and wipe that glue up while it's wet because it will smear all over the place and then your uh, thing will not look right at all. Let's set the time correctly. The time I'm doing this, it's not midnight, but I just want to make sure everything passes over everything and doesn't catch.
As I say, it's usually the tails that catch. And we're pleased with that. And there it is on my wall. Uh, it'd be good for a kid's bedroom, I suppose. And I also cut out a tail out of the offcuts and glued that on separately. But yeah, I kind of like it. There we go. If you enjoyed that, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe for more. Thanks. Catch you in the next. Cheers.